You've survived another week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the Black Man with a Gun Show. This week, our emphasis is on women and love. Blackmanwithagun.com Ken Blanchard's Pro Gun Podcast. Happy belated Valentine's Day to you. You know, this is uh, something I do because I love doing it, and I love the community that I found, and I love you. Kathy Williams is our American hero that we're spotlighting this week in our history segment. And uh, Michael J. Woodland and I are going to just talk about a whole bunch of different things. And one of them is starting a gun club to help with a shooting team. Hopefully we get through that. And if it doesn't make any sense, let me know. After John Wayne leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance, we're going to get on with episode number 603. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thinking about the fundamentals of shooting, you know, stance and grip, drawing, sight alignment, sight picture, trigger, control, breathing, and follow through. I thought about my platform here as a podcaster, in the gun community. The grip that uh, I have on you and you have on me and the presentation, the way I do this thing, it's a little bit different than many of the folks on Instagram and YouTube and even in podcasting space. And that's a good thing. I truly appreciate you. No, better than that, I love you. And I can tell you why. You see, in our community, There's a lot of division. I mean, there's a lot of different niches. Folks are into different things. We're not all the same. But one thing that I found out is that what we are the same is we care about our families. We care about our country. We care about our rights. We may be different politically. We might be different religiously. We might be different in ethnicity and a whole bunch of stuff that really doesn't matter. But what I found out and what I like a lot about you is that you listen to me. You are in my circle. You're in my corner. You support me. Some of us have met. Some of us have not met. But you're here, and you've been here off and on since 2007. I got some relatives I haven't talked to that much. We believe in the same stuff. We laugh at the same jokes. We want the same things. That pretty much makes us family. You and me, we go together like guns and ammo. Actually, I feel like I'm going around. I'm doing my uh, second tour with this show. I'm picking up new people, and I want to keep close to folks who've been with me a while. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for allowing me to be your podcaster guy. And I know I've taken a few left turns here and there. But the ride's been good, right? Yeah. Need to hear from you. Let me know what you think about the show, about the direction, because we, I plan to do some new things in 2019. I want to have um, a couple of more guests. I want to do our back to basics thing, like this seven pieces of uh, marksmanship, stand script drawing, sight line, sight picture, trigger management, breathing, follow through. I want to make sure that all our new people get a grip, get a good platform, a good stable platform to operate on. We operate in a dangerous times. There's just like there's new people in our movement. There's also new people in Congress and the Senate and local legislature that don't have a clue and are actually doing the same stupid stuff they did 20 years ago. So it's going back around that way too. And I need all my soldiers, all, all the folks who know what's right to stand up and to speak out. And when you get dirty and knocked down and bruised and bleeding a little bit, I'll be right here to pick you back up. I understand how this thing works because all the arguments are old arguments. All the stuff is not new. There's still scammers and pretenders and contenders. There's still people who don't have a clue 
of what the truth is. There's the ignorant. There's those who are manipulating the system. There are those who are trying to take advantage of other people. All that still works, and they're on both sides of our argument. They're on our side. They're on the other side. This journey has been fun for me, too. I remember um, one time I went to SHOT Show, and I actually went to dinner and hung out with about nine Asian guys, and that was hilarious. We were uh, we actually went to a soulful restaurant outside of uh, near Henderson somewhere in Vegas. Yeah, that was crazy. It was like rush hour times 10. Then there was a time that I flew all the way to Nashville, Memphis, maybe. It was somewhere in Tennessee and actually got a chance to hang out with a new company, LuckyGunner.com, and met that whole family. Really, really cool. And being in this community, I got a chance to speak here in the nation's capital on the grounds of the Washington Monument. We did this first and only Second Amendment rally here in D.C. and met Tim Schmidt, who became the giant that now has the USCCA. Yeah. And you and I probably connected a few places. Yep. All because of this show. I was hardcore when I first started. I was at everything. The National Rifle Association's annual meetings. I was at the Second Amendment Foundation stuff. I was shot show as much as I could get there. Oh, man. I was chasing the dream. Kind of chilled the last couple of years. I remember going to a Black Hawk um, media day, which was really cool because I got a chance to meet Barbara Baird, who's become a friend forever after that, and her husband and a whole bunch of other people as time has gone on. Cheryl Todd and the whole Todd family. There's just so many folks who have come um, as a, you know, just a point of being a gun rights activist and being a podcaster and a new media person that I would never have met if it hadn't been for this show. And then now, everybody has a podcast almost. Shoot, I've been to conferences and stuff where I didn't even go to the conference. I stayed in the hallways or in the garage. Like one time I was smoking a cigar with my friend Derek, who later became uh, writers of Zombie Strike together. And he helped me start my Solomon Love series. Then that was the time I flew out to San Francisco for a job-related thing and got a chance to meet my uh, my bud Dave. Yeah, it's just it's just stuff and people that make this thing important for me. And you're a part of that. I want to give a quick shout out and a thanks to all those who have recently subscribed to blackmanwithagun.tv, my new YouTube t- um, channel, trying to get a thousand people um, by uh, Christmas 2019. And uh, we're, we're on our way get like one or two people every week. I, we have to make some time, take some time off probably and uh, do a, just a whole series of videos for the rest of the year. Because I'm trying to squeeze them into the weekday and it's not happening. And because I got friends, I want to actually uh, advertise some of your stuff because I'm not the only one out here trying to make it. Check out amtraininggroup.com. That's americantraininggroup.com. But it's amtraininggroup.com. Check out Alex's page. Also, his web store at amtg.ecwid.com. There'll be links in the show notes in case you missed this one. He's out in California, and the dude is cool as a mug. So check out americantraininggroup.com. That's amtraininggroup.com. Also, if you are in the charity mode, I got a cause for you to think about. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society could use your help. Um, if you got a dollar that you can spare, I know a young little lady by the name of Catherine that's um, trying to raise money. And if you use her link, she'll get credit through a school project as well. And that's for a leukemia and lymphoma. The link also will be in the show notes. So please check out however you follow the podcast and look for the show notes. It'll be there. Help out Catherine. Help out uh, all those young people out there suffering. Got me? Family, y'all. That's what we do here. And if you got something special going down or you got a business or something that you're trying to do, be good for the order for our family. Feel free to send me an email. Let me know so I can help promote it because that's what I'm here for, y'all. Speaking of promotion, David Cole, my writing genius, um, wrote a really good article on BlackMountainTheGun.com. So check that out if you haven't already seen it. That article is so good that uh, Gun Talks, Tom Gresham, called me and um, wanted to talk 
about it. So I said, hey, you want to talk to Dave? So Dave will be on Gun Talk with Tom Gresham uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. So if you're listening to his show, check out my man, David Cole. And I'll pass out a few more links and some more information about some stuff that we got going on at the end of the show. Crossbreed holsters are some of the finest holsters in America. They are imitated for a reason. They sell holsters, belts, modular systems. The U.S. company that my friend Mark Craig had started in 2005 has been a supporter for you and I for almost a decade. Crossbreed Holsters has raised the standard for customer service in the holster industry through its two-week try-it-free guarantee and a lifetime warranty. You've tried the rest, now get the best. Go to CrossbreedHolsters.com and tell them Ken sent you. CrossbreedHolsters.com This week on our American History segment, I want to talk to you about Cafe William or William Cafe or John William. It was a woman, actually, who enlisted into the Army using multiple names. On November 15th, 1866, this chick informed her recruiting officer that she was a 22-year-old cook. He described her as five foot nine, with black eyes, black hair, and black complexion. An Army surgeon examined Kathy and determined the recruit was fit for duty, thus sealing her fate in history as the first documented black woman to enlist in the Army, even though the U.S. Army regulations forbade the enlistment of women. She was assigned to the 38th U.S. Infantry and traveled throughout the West with her unit. Now, this is like the second time I've talked about Cathay Williams, but the first time this year, and maybe probably the first time you've ever heard it. She was born to an enslaved mother and a free father in Independence, Missouri in 1844. During her adolescence, she worked as a house slave at the Johnson Plantation on the outskirts of Jefferson City, Missouri. In 1861, Union forces occupied Jefferson City during the early stages of the Civil War. At this time, captured slaves were officially designated as, quote, contraband and were forced to serve in military support roles like cooks, laundresses, and nurses. Before her voluntary enlistment, at just 17 years old, Williams served as an army cook and a washerwoman. In this role, she accompanied the infantry all over the country. Williams served under the service of General Philip Sheridan, and witnessed the Red River Campaign and the Battle of Pea Ridge. Shortly after her enlistment, though, she contracted smallpox and was hospitalized. Williams rejoined her unit in New Mexico. There, possibly due to the effects of smallpox, the heat, and the years of marching, her body began to show signs of strain. Due to her frequent hospitalization, the post-surgeon finally discovered she was a woman and informed the post-commander. She was honorably discharged by her commanding officer, Captain Charles E. Clark, on October 14th, 1868. Though her disability discharge meant the end of her tenure with the U.S. Army, her adventure continued. She signed up with an emerging all-black regiment that would eventually become part of the legendary Buffalo Soldiers. The cool thing that makes her an American hero, though over 400 women served in the Civil War posing as male soldiers, Williams was the first to enlist and the only documented woman to serve in the U.S. Army while disguised as a man during the Indian Wars. Williams is also known as a Buffalo soldier. Williams' de- uh, determination to serve her country demonstrates the extraordinary feats women have accomplished simply trying to live their lives. But wait, how about some drama? Following her discharge from the Army, she went back to work as a cook at Fort Union, New Mexico, and later moved to Pueblo, Colorado. Though she married, it ended badly after her husband stole her money and a team of horses. Williams had him arrested and then moved to Trinidad, Colorado, where she worked as a seamstress. It was during this time that her story became public. A reporter from St. Louis heard rumors of a female African-American who had served in the Army and came to interview her. Her life and military service narrative was published in the St. Louis Daily Times on January 7th, to the back, January 2nd, 1876. Around 1889 or 1890, Williams entered a local hospital and applied for a disability pension based on her military service. Though there was a precedent for granting pension to female officers, like it happened to Deborah Sampson, Anna Marie Lane, and Molly Williams, who disguised themselves as men in the Revolutionary War, Williams' request was denied. In September 1893, a doctor examined Williams. She suffered from neuralgia and diabetes, and had all her toes amputated and walked with a crutch. The doctor decided that she did not qualify for disability payments. 
The exact date of her death is unknown, but she is believed to be, have died shortly after she was denied medical benefits. That sounds like something happened to my cousin. All right, we're going to jump right into a conversation between Michael J. Woodland of m-wtactical.com. This weekend, when I was doing my competition match, I noticed there was a large presence of women out there, right? And not taking anything away from it, um, it was actually pleasurable to see, you know, actually watching women out there running a handgun better than a lot of men that was out there. And there's one female that I met this weekend. She was actually on my squad and she was only about like three apples high and she was handling it. And I told her like, yo, if you are interested in doing an interview, here's my card. She contacted me. So we're going to set up a date here in the next day or two and do an interview and um, talk about her being a competition shooter from a female's perspective, you know, um, you know, local level, not, you know, talking about the pros or anything, just the challenges she has to deal with from day to day. You know, so um, that was pretty remarkable to actually see. And um, there are a lot of women that are very active in the behind the scenes stuff of like IDPA and USPSA as well. You know, so a couple months ago when I first got back into competition shooting, I was on the squad with this one female and I knew nothing about her, but she was very helpful to a lot of the new people. And she was like directing people and, you know, giving them advice and everything. And come to find out, like I said, she has her hands and everything. And she follows me on um, Instagram and her name is S Jenny 35. I think it is. But she was actually one of the people that was helping me, you know, with the scoring grading and everything and like just quizzing me on different stuff because we're going to be doing a state match together not necessarily on the same squad at the state match but she's helping prepare me for the state match because you know if you make a wrong call at a higher level man you're gonna be dealt to the sharks you know but there are a lot of women that are very active in the gun community you know versus five years ago when it wasn't really that many women. So the progression is coming and I'm happy to see it. All right. This is from Phil Smith, the president of the national African-American gun association. He says, I respect African-American women, but when I first started the national African-American gun association as an organization, I just assumed that our membership would be dominated by African-American men. And I thought just a few of our women would actively participate Wow, have I been pleasantly surprised. African-American women are making their presence felt and are not just joining the NAAGA, but are leading several of our chapters as leaders. Currently, the NAAGA is about 60% African-American women. Let me repeat that figure. I said 60% black women. He says he never saw it coming. Women are now learning how to shoot. They're bringing other women to join them and in some cases becoming certified instructors. This has been the most surprising aspect of the development of the National African-American Gun Association. African-American women, just like in our community, are becoming the backbone of this organization. When learning about firearms, women don't have a lot of, quote, macho issues that men have and are more open to learning. Also, women are typically better listeners, more detailed, and most women have the disposable income to purchase a gun. I don't want to touch the question Are women better shooters than men at this time? Because my, quote, inbox would be full within minutes from both genders. It is beautiful to see when a woman joins the NAAGA with no previous contact with firearms and a year later is shooting with precision and telling all her friends to join because she is having fun. But this emergence of black women has not gone unnoticed by gun manufacturers and now the entire firearms industry has identified a potentially new financial revenue stream and demographic that can assist with slowing gun sales nationwide. So don't be surprised when we start seeing more women of color in marketing advertisements this year in 2019. And in some publications, it's already being done. Let's salute all women who are active members of the NAAGA and are taking steps to learn how to protect themselves and their loved ones. And this is from Philip Smith. 
Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see him on social media on podcast, just like we got um Avery and um uh, and Trigger Happy Panda out there. Mm-hmm. She's not the only one. There's there's some more. Oh, they're they're coming. Yeah. Um, every now and then I'll turn on um, NRA TV and there's a show called, I think it's called First Shots. Julie Galab, you know, she hosts it and competition amongst all women, no men on the show, it was all women. And that was pretty interesting to watch those episodes as these women are given specific challenges, you know, to end up winning at the end of the season, you know, it pretty, it's like I said, it's pretty interesting. So they took somebody who's like an everyday person, um, novice shooter to intermediate and pair them with, um, a pro. And then they work and negotiate, build up the other person's skill level, negotiate this course together. And, you know, I don't think any money was won, but it was, it was really interesting to watch that. So where are we going to go as a, as a community when this all happens? Is they going to change for us or is it going to be the same? Yeah, so I would say from the bottom rungs, from everything I see at the bottom level, is people are not working together. And maybe if more women step up and be club presidents or... um some type of organization leader, maybe that will get rid of some of the egos and people can actually start forming those working relationships to bring people together so we can have the numbers for the fight. You know, um, speaking of it from the top level, I don't know. I think the higher up you get, the dirtier it gets because yeah. it's, it's more yeah, money. That, that ceiling's still there. The ceiling's yeah. still there. Mm-hmm. The old boys ain't giving up nothing. The same folks who are in charge right now were in charge when I started back in 1991. Once, you know, females start taking over club chapter, you know, organization, leadership presidents, or they're in more leadership roles and they got more influence. Um, I think that will be the unity measure because the ego is out of the way when a woman's in charge. Unless you get one who mimics her mentor. Oh. Yeah, her other half or, yeah, you're right on that. You get that too. Yeah. Because you can get some people, like I had a boss like that. She was Mm -hmm. worse than a dude that was, that she replaced. (laughs) She tried to be harder than he was. And I was like, oh my gosh, nobody needs to go there. But she did. Yeah, something to prove. (laughs) Yeah, and we all suffered for it. But that doesn't happen all the time. Glass ceilings. Man, this stuff, you know, because it never, never goes away. It's always an issue. Always a subject. We never get to that Star Trek time when everybody's just like equal. We're still fighting for stuff. Me personally speaking, like what I read in history compared to what we have going on today, we've only moved, if you're looking at a football field representation from 1950s and 60s, we only move two yards forward. That I'm telling you, man, we only move two yards forward. Because right now we're about to get a penalty flag and we're going back about 15. <laughs> you know, so um, we need to get some unity going on. We need to get some unity going on and people really need to pull together and fight for, well, you can't say that because people are not willing to sacrifice like they were back then. You know, so back in the 50s and 60s, um, it was understood the sacrifice, you know, for a better tomorrow. Everybody understood that. Um, oh, no. They, they, they had some struggles back then. There was a whole bunch of people, man, didn't want to do it. Um, yeah, but, all right, so, like, unlike today, who can we actually say, um, like, who's the civic leaders that we have today compared to what we had yesterday? Yeah, that part's gone. Yeah, so who who are the people that's actually stimulating the minds and pushing people to boycott? You know what I'm saying? Because right now, yeah, if you tell somebody to boycott something today, right? Oh, it's going to go back to, oh, no, man, no, I, I need my Jordans, you know, or I'm, I have to drive my Lexus, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's 
crazy. Nobody is willing to sacrifice. And without that means, that measure, that's where the fight stops. Because we can sit here all day and say, boycott this, don't buy this, don't do that. You know, people are just not willing to sacrifice. Well, it's my money. I can do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Know? Economically, financially, we are nowhere like we were like back then. You can't get people on one accord to do anything. Everything is alternative. That's like the new word to. They took freedom to a different point. Well, I'm free and I don't have to do nothing. I'm going to ride my unicorn and flip on out of here. It's like. Wow. One thing I can say, which was a change that I've seen, and I'm pretty sure you've seen it from back then, that um, people are more willing to welcome people on the gun range. You know, you know, so we should be more willing to accept people to equality the same way. Well, see, our community is still doing our community. That's what's messed up. We are minority, the gun community. In, in America, within our own community, we've done a whole lot better in the last few years. That's the good news. Uh, I've seen some amazing stuff happen. So then now, I love these guys. I love the folks that we shoot with. It's it's so much different. We ain't perfect, but we we so far from where we used to be. But the rest of the world, like it got worse. So how can we do better with that? Bring more people. Like to the range, bring more people, like more, more family members. That's what I do. Every time I have a competition, I ask four or five friends and maybe one to come with me. But that's all you need is one because that one person might spark, start a conversation with somebody else. Now that person gets four or five people interested. Now the next time you go, you got four people. And that's the trickle effect. Hey, man, I went to the shooting competition. I think I'm interested. I want to try it, <laughs> you know. And, yeah, so sometimes that's that's where it starts at. Um, the other side of it, I think we need to do a better, a better dialogue and a better visual of shooting at the range, you know. So um, I'm still trying to play with the camera. Instead of having it, whereas you got six or seven people online shooting in one direction. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still trying to play with it to show, okay, you can still have fun at the range, still be safe. But, you know what I'm saying? And still learn at the same time. It's it's more of a challenge for me without the whole big show production of you jumping over stuff, shooting targets, yeah, reloading on the run, you know, all that. Look, I'm John Wick. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to get in that movie. <laughs> but hmm. like I told you beforehand, the goal is to become an A-class shooter by the end of this year, December 30th of this year. I plan on being an A-class shooter. And this weekend that just went past that shooting match out of 90 people, I ended up coming in 30th place and 10 out of 10th place out of 30 in my division. So I was like, yeah, I'll take that. That was pretty good. I, I know some stuff I got to work on. Um, a lot of areas I slowed myself down, so there wasn't no doubt in my mind about being disqualified or anything like that. But there's other areas that I, I seriously have to work on to get those numbers up a little bit. Okay. Cool, man. You on your way? I'm trying to be. Trying to be. Like I said, go ahead and give me a team shirt. And then um, put the black man with the gun logo <laughs> somewhere on the back <laughs> and run with it. Man, I ought to just start a team. Yeah, there's, um, I think there's a lot to consider when you do a team also. I think you should be able to shoot. Um, I know my buddy, he owns Delphi Tactical, and I know to get on his team, it's like a stringent process. And it isn't just like they look at you one time and say, yeah, we want you. I think he actually looks at you for over a year before he makes a determination. How many folks have got to be on the team? Right now, I think he only has three or four. But I know 
they do a little bit of USPSA, but they do majority ID. I mean, not, I'm sorry. They do majority three gun. So, um, then they be traveling around doing that and they're in it hard, you know? So if you do anything else, look up team, um, Delphi tactical and give them a like, cause they are putting in that work. Hmm. Man, you ain't said nothing to me. I'm ready to just do black man with a gun team. And, uh, I'm just going to find like three, four people. You one of them. And y'all just do the thing. Let's do it. <laughs> Start at the bottom of the list. I don't care. You, gonna, you ain't going to stay there. <laughs> You're going to work it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Let's do it. All right. I got to find out how to start that. That's that's my project. I'm writing that down right now. All right. Let's I ain't got a dollar. I'm going to make it happen anyway. Uh, was, the, the name of the team going to be? Um, Black man Black- with a gun. No, podcast the leaders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna make it happen, man. Yeah, that's that's how you do it though, man. You just gotta jump in and make it happen. And um I think the biggest part is um finding Spon- sponsors. Sponsored by Chick-fil-A and Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm like, kidding. <laughs> man, every time you come to the range, you eating good. Yeah, man. <laughs> Man, I smell chicken. <laughs> I smell chicken. That's that's a racial stuff right there. I don't even care. I get joked, dog. On it. Watch, I do it. I walking off the range. I don't care what y'all say. I'm full though. Yeah, we sponsored too, right? We are here. We gonna make. It. Yep, that's it right there. That's my plan. That's that's the whole name of this episode team we building a team man so um you team captain and uh i'm gonna have folks starting to to line up with you you got to sort them out right 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 yeah like i said we can make it make it work yeah <laughs> yeah buddy yeah, yeah so- that's, ha- that's that's happening that's happening like now <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so um what else is um new with you what's going on on your end man i'm just loving life i'm trying to i'm trying to like just get over 2019 is it's gonna be some new stuff coming. I um I'm in it. I'm like uh I feel like uh like this the year. This the year where folks are gonna say, Hey, I heard of that dude. Uh I just ordered a hundred copies of my book. So I'm trying to be selling things out of the back of my car like like Jay Z did back with the mixtapes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm I'm going in full hustle mode, man. I just got some keychains made with all the logos on it, and I had to send them back because they cut off half the thing. But again, uh, everything that I've been trying to do, I got a second breath, and uh, I done put away all my negatives for the most part. Of like, I tried this before, and I ain't gonna do it again. Now I'm like, now, nah. now I got a chance just to do it again, do it right, do it better, and. uh and take the knowledge that I got. I got some. I got some experience, so I gotta use it. Right. I know that. Um, I had a gun sent to me, um, last week, week before uh-huh. last, and I went to my buddy, um, over at CAE Transfers over here mm-hmm. in Columbia, South Carolina. And of course, when you walk into the office, guess the first thing you see when you sit down at the desk. Black man with the gun reloaded. Picture of you holding the rifle. What? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So as soon as I sat down, he was like, Yeah, man, I told you I'm a listener. See, I got the book. And I was like, Yeah, man. I said, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Mr. Blanchard that too. <laughs> oh, that's cool right there. Yeah. Like I said, if you want, go check out those people at um on Instagram, on Facebook. It's called C A E Transferred. So and um C A E, I think that's the um the code for like the airlines for Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I got actually Avery is hooking me up, teaching me about some social media stuff that I had weaknesses on. So, oh man, she's. I'm getting. I'm, I'm getting a team, man. I feel like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel pretty good. Got you on one side, got her on the other. I'm right, ready to roll like like Moses. I'm good now. Man, I, I hit her up one day. She gave me like um a ten minute class on um Instagram. How to yeah. do like the little stuff with Instagram? Yeah, she ain't no joke. Man, I said I'm all on it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Hi, this is Avery, also known as Skip, with Skip's Tactical Solutions. I would love for you to check out my podcast called Skip's Tactical Solutions, and it can be found in all podcast players. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Skip's Tactical Solutions. And while you're at it, feel free to check out my website, that's SkipsTacticalSolutions.com. All right, Ken, back to you. All right, man, I got some work to do. I got to do, uh, I got to figure out this team thing, load that thing up so I can get some folks to, to come to you to do tryouts and <laughs> work on some sponsors. And we got something, we're going we're gonna to make this thing happen, man. Oh, yeah, we can make it happen. I'll make it work. They go say, black man with a gun. Holy smokes. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Yeah, I got some stuff to do. I got to get our team together. Well, me and the Lord, we got an understanding. We're on a mission from God. All right, I got 900 call to actions for this episode. And the first one is just to say thank you to you. Um, Black Man with a Gun, the book, Reloaded, is in this going to reprint it out again. I'm going to have a whole bunch of copies here at the house and I will be autographing them and sending them out to those who are interested in getting a copy and going to charge a little extra for that so that I can fund my trip to the National Rifle Association's annual meeting in a couple of months. Also, if you would like to support the show, now that we don't have a boatload of sponsors, your support is greatly appreciated. Anything you can give through patreon.com forward slash black man with a gun or PayPal or any other way you think of it. Again, gladly, gladly appreciate it. Don't forget to check the other links out. They'll be in the show notes. I think I'm going to post this episode for sure on blackmanthegun.com with all the extra links so that you can see it. If you're not getting this on the app, the free app is free to you, but it's actually costing us to um, maintain and all that good stuff. Patreon helps with that. So be a show enough supporter. If I can get just one new person next week, that'll be really, really cool to join us on our show enough supporting list of Patreon people. And if you just like can't stand Patreon, uh, you can do uh, PayPal. And if you can't stand PayPal, we even use the old fashioned mail system. The post office box number two up in Marlboro, Maryland, 20773. And if you're interested in joining our club, I'm going to start something so we can actually train to be competitors. If you're interested in that, I'll need instructors for that. I'll need people for that. So right now, it's free. Just sign up on our little list up there. It's going to be on the show notes. Everything's going to be on the show notes for our club. I'm just going to call it club if you're interested. Let me have your email address so I can contact you and tell you what's going down. It's a national thing. Uh, we're going to we're gonna have fun. I can't do this stuff now without having some fun in it. You feel me? Man, this has been one wet winter. I don't know how it is where you are, but it's been raining for three days without stopping. My wife is really sad right now. She's standing and looking through the window. Mm. You know, if the rain doesn't stop tomorrow, I'll have to let her in. All right, that's it, my friend. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the show. If there's anything I can do for you, feel free to send me a note. Contact information can be found at blackmanwithagun.com. Just in case nobody has told you this today, I love you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next week. Shalom, baby. Until next time, friends. To keep in touch with Ken and his cause, head over to blackmanwithagun.com. you do if I sang out of tune would you stand up and walk out on me and I'll try not to sing out of key baby oh. all I need is you Take this podcast higher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no 
real babies were harmed in the making of this podcast.